Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego. And as you can see, we're upstairs in our training room, our conference room, where we do meetings and we do uh, concealed carry training. And this is also where I do a majority of my dry fire practice. Dry fire because I can uh, shoot at my favorite buddy, Bob. All right, I can kind of have some realistic targets to, do, uh, uh, to shoot with. But one of the main things I want to tell you about is that dry fire is the master key to shooting and becoming skilled with a handgun. And there's really two or three different aspects of dry fire shooting. Uh, the first and most important is the actual manipulation of the gun itself. Being able to comfortably and efficiently handle the weapon. And when I say handle the weapon, that's either coming out of a holster, coming off of a table, and then presenting the weapon to the target. Now, obviously, first and foremost, let's talk about dry fire. Whenever you dry fire, the main objective is to be safe, okay? And to be safe, that means there's no ammunition in the gun, obviously, it's dry. There's no magazines in the gun, obviously, it's dry. There's no ammunition laying around, no loaded magazines laying around close to me because I don't want to have any problems or any inadvertent load and shoot. So there's no ammunition in the room. I guess that's kind of what I'm getting to. So when you dry fire, make sure you're in a very safe environment. Always keep the gun pointing in a safe direction. Always keep your, uh, uh, your ammunition away from you so you can't just inadvertently load it and dry fire. Now, I will tell you, I've been dry firing for 30 years, and I have had accidental discharges. And you will too, so be careful. Always keep the gun pointing in a safe direction. That said, let's move on now. So, like I said, there's like three aspects of dry fire. One, of course, is the manipulation or operation of the handgun or weapon because this really applies to shotguns and pistols as well and rifles as well because the dry fire skill is really about being able to one access to present and three see the front sights or align the front sights so that your sight picture is where your eyesight is all right so the dry fire practice that we do uh, is related to one, being able to access the gun, whether from a holster, whether from a table, keeping the finger off the trigger as a habit until we're ready to shoot. Presenting the gun up to the target, and then at that point, once you see the target, the gun's pointing down range, that's when you can start to get to the trigger. See how my finger is automatically coming here? I don't have to be all the way out. I don't want to get up here and do that. I want to get up here and come up and go, as I know, because I, I'm bringing the gun up in a self-defense mode. I know that if the gun's coming out, I'm going to shoot it. You know, I'm not bringing it out just to scare someone, all right? So the concept I want to train myself is to come up and here start to access that trigger so that when I'm here, I can even shoot from this short position if I had to, if someone's rushing me, and then present the gun out. Now, the main thing about presenting the gun out and the main thing about dry firing you're trying to do is to present the gun in a consistent manner. And when I say consistent, that means the grip is the same, and as you present the gun, the sights are already lined up or pre-aligned based upon your practice as you come out once you get full extension the sight is already lined up the sight alignment that is the front sight is nestled in the rear notch perfectly every time that's what you're trying to do and of course the sight picture is I'm putting that sight alignment on top of the target that I'm looking at so my eyes are focused on the target and I'm bringing the sights up into my eyesight. So when I first started dry firing, I was using a standard Glock and every time I would rack the slide, come up, access the sights, verify the sight picture, squeeze the trigger, and then come back and have to recharge or recharge the trigger so that I'd be able to do it again, come up, see the front sight, and try to, in my mind's eye, see that that front sight is exactly where I want it to be on the target I want to hit. After a while, of course, you say to yourself, gee, is it really working? <laughs> am I actually there? You know, it looks like it is, but am I actually there? And so one year, about 10, maybe 12 years ago at the SHOT Show, I found a company that made a laser. And the laser looks like this. And I dubbed it 
the magic bullet. So get in here and get a close up. It's a really neat little device. It's on the, on the one tip here, it has a, uh, uh, a rubberized uh, tip. And on the other side is the actual lens with a laser. So the rubberized tip is actuated by the striker. And it will put out, every time you hit it, a laser beam. And the laser beam could be a red visible laser or an IR or infrared laser that you can't see. And there's a reason for that too. Now we'll get into that a little bit later on. But this is a great little device. And uh, basically what it does, I'll go ahead and lock the slide back, is you just drop it straight in and push it down and that's it. Now, every time I pull the trigger, it spits out a laser beam. This one happens to be the IR, so you're not gonna see it on camera. We'll show you the red one in a little bit. But, so now, I could rack the slide, come up, have my head fixated on my target, my eyes fixated on my target, and I notice I said head, because I don't want my head to move. I don't wanna come up and do that. I wanna be here in that position, <laughs> so that really when I bring the gun up, my head is still, my eyes are still, they're level, I'm not tilted in any different way, and I've got them fixated on the target I wanna hit. And when we talk about the target you wanna hit, you wanna be very specific about the target you wanna hit. So competition shooters know that the smaller the target, the more accurate you'll be. So if the A zone is this big, well you don't wanna hit the A zone, you wanna hit a spot in the A zone. You wanna aim for a, a particular bullet hole or a particular mark on the target. You wanna be that precise with your aiming. You don't wanna just hit the, the four by six uh, A zone. You wanna hit the spot that you're looking for. So um, the more precise you are with your eyes, the more precise your shots are gonna be. Uh, again, this was the, uh, the, the, the transition from dry fire with no real backup to now, I'm able to see that, hey, this is actually working. I'm coming up and boom, and I'm able to fixate my eyes on a target and actually hit that target with that red visible laser. And that was really cool. It's like, wow, this is a great advance. The challenge is, is that we got to a point where, you know, racking a slide got to be, you know, kind of cumbersome and not as practical because I would come up and hit one shot, but I wanted to go to another target. Well, you know, it really wasn't working. So I developed the reset trigger for your Glock. And this is a Glock 19. It has a trigger in it. It also has the red visible laser in it. That's what this uh, little uh, uh, red uh, device out here is. But the red laser is just like the magic bullet I showed you earlier. Now, every time I pull the trigger, it puts out a red laser. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. But it also resets itself. So now the next level of dry fire is the ability to not only come up, again, head is fixated, target's in, in sight, come up, boom, and now I can squeeze multiple shots and go to another target. So the reset trigger elevated the dry fire concept, the dry fire training to a whole nother level. I mean, it really is just the most, uh, awesome way to practice because not only do you get a lot of operation time but you're also working your mind and your head and your your eyes to be able to access the gun and come up and shoot the target you're looking for fast all right because that's what we're trying to do here i mean if i you know wanted to just sit there and aim at the target and squeeze the sights and look for you know a very precise target that's fairly easy at this stage of life the ability to draw the gun, present it downrange, and hit fast with combat accuracy is what we're talking about. And that's what you can develop with the reset trigger. These are very popular with competition shooters, of course, and I'm gonna show you how I use it for concealed carry training because uh, there's another level that has now been introduced to the reset trigger with the magic bullet for your dry fire training. And it is this new target, which I'm gonna call, uh, and which is called, should I say, the, uh, the PET-2. It's made by my friends at Laser Ammo. And uh, this uh, little target is really cool. I've got it on a tripod that comes with it. The um, tripod's collapsible. It's pretty cool, you can tilt it up, you can do all kinds of fun stuff to it. Um, it, you know, obviously uh, is, is designed to uh, 
allow you to uh, park it just about anywhere. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to park it here. Let me show you the operation. Now, this thing is really cool because it does a lot of neat things and it um, will help you determine what's working from a speed perspective. Now, I will say this. The target is really small. Okay, it's not necessarily what I would call combat accuracy, although, you know, we just talked about hitting small targets. Uh, in my mind, the combat accuracy, you know, could be about this big or maybe even a, a, a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper is combat accuracy, but certainly, you know, the target could be that big. But that said, this target is small, so you want to be careful with your distances because we want to practice some speed with this. So the farther out you get, the more difficult it is. But the more you practice, the better you're going to become. All right, so that said, let's go ahead and talk about this target real quick. It's, uh, it's actually pretty neat. It's got six different modes. Uh, in fact, um, I'll read them here for you because uh, uh, they uh, are pretty interesting. So to, to access it, you turn it on like so. Let me go ahead and show you real quick. The modes are here. So there's two. Oops, sorry. Let me try that again. There's there's a P2 as a, as a program two, program three, program four, program five, program six, goes to program one. Okay, program one's pretty simple. It's just a shot counter. So every time I hit the target, it's going to go ahead and count my shots. Very simple. Program two is what we're going to use a lot because I like this one a lot. Program two uh, will go here. Let's see here. There's program one. There's program two. Program two now has an automatic uh, start. That's kind of random. I think it's four seconds. And now it times my shots. So now, after the beep goes on, it times my shot. It resets itself. It's going to do it again. And there's my shot. It's going to reset itself and do it one more time. And then I'll go on to program three. Just like that. That's pretty cool. Now, program three is actually uh, pretty interesting. This one actually does a, um, a countdown. Come up and shoot, and shoot again, and shoot again, and shoot again, and shoot again. How many shots did you get in that four seconds is basically what it comes down to. So there's your four second timer. So here we go, one, two, it's counting down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. <laughs> so there's a lot of shots. Now that's actually kind of fun because it can work on your uh, trigger control and your uh, your ability to manipulate the trigger. Uh, and you'll see that you know um, the ability to uh, certainly shoot in combat uh, will come down to your trigger speeds with your finger. So the, tr the finger uh, control is kind of fun. That's number three. Number four is a double tap version. Now, this one's actually pretty neat, too, for a lot of you. Uh, uh, okay, it's going to count down. And the timer's going to show the second shot. Boom, there's first shot and second shot. So you get two different times there. That one's a little bit hard. I wish they would show you the first shot first, but so you can see your split times. But that's what they do the next one. Here we go again. Draw, shoot, first shot. Second shot. Now, that could be used for your reload practice. So you shoot, drop a magazine, come back up and shoot again. You can kind of see the difference there. Uh, this is the next one uh, would be number five. And it's going to uh, show us a, um, a start time. Boom, boom, boom. And there's my three shots. And it tells me the times of the shots which is actually pretty neat. So you can program the number of shots you want to do. I've got to program to three. So it's going to show my, uh, my times for each shot. And I could get my split times out of that. So let's do that one more time. So draw at the beep. First shot, second shot, third shot. OK. And so there's the first shot was at 89. Second shot is going to be uh, 130. And the next shot is going to be at uh, 172. So 40, uh, four seconds split, or 0.4 seconds split there. And let's do one more time here. I'll go to six now, the last one. And this one I find kind of useful as well. Uh, this one actually shows you uh, the split times. Got three shots at the beep. There's the three shots. Here's the first shot was at 0.69. Second shot is now 0.22, more than 0.69. That's the split, and the third one is 0.20. So there's the six modes.
And they're kind of fun because uh, they will help you uh, work on various things. So the most useful in my mind, uh, we're going to use that for concealed carry. And that's actually the uh, program number two. And the other one I like a lot for competition shooters would be uh, the program number five, where you actually shoot the first shot, drop a mag, reload, shot again, and you get a time split as to how fast are your reloads. Now, the concept there is that you're trying to use this timer and try different techniques to see which one is faster. And it, it's really, it's up to you. Sometimes people think in their mind that that was really fast because there was a lot of motion. And other times when you are just more efficient and you come up and you think you're slow, it's actually faster. So your mind will play tricks on you with these speeds. That's why the timer is very important because it allows you to see realistically what works best for you and which equipment works best. Where is the placement of those magazines? Where's the placement of the holster? What's gonna work best uh, for your particular setup based upon empirical data of, of a timer versus just saying, oh, that fell faster. And you can do all this before you make it out to the range. All right, and because all the information, everything you gather here, all the practice, all of this transfers directly to the range. And because of that, uh, I will say to you that um, the top competition shooters in the world spend 60% of their practice, maybe 70% of their practice, dry firing. And I will say that about handgun and rifle shooters for sure, especially long range rifle shooters. They're gonna sit in position and dry fire more than they're gonna throw rounds downrange. Because that's the skill you need to learn. You need to learn how to be able to present the gun or hold the gun and breathe and uh, shoot, especially for long range rifle shooters when they were in the jackets and all that stuff. Those guys, you know, it's really about dry fire and really about controlling yourself and controlling your breath. Uh, the lasers help you quantify your practice. And with the, um, the handgun, uh, this is the type of thing where you can actually, in your house, get more practice that'll be more valuable to you than going down uh, to the range and shooting a thousand rounds. And I really mean that. And that's the honest to God truth. Most of the top shooters I know will spend a lot of time not only handling, manipulating, reloading, doing all the drills without shooting. Because those are the things that will gather your seconds. Everybody can pull the trigger fast. I mean, really, when you think about it, you know, if you have proper technique and proper grip and you actually, you know, know what to do, that's, that's the tip of the iceberg. It's really everything else that gets you there that's going to save you all the time. And that practice can be done at home with these lasers. So let me go ahead and show you what I like to do with uh, uh, this particular laser. So you can see I've got Bob set up with the laser. And um, I've got him in a shot where I think is, you know, considered to be a, you know, the kill zone or the uh, spot that would be effective. Now, you know, obviously this is all about self-defense, so don't get offended, but you know, bottom line is we're looking for a shot that's gonna incapacitate someone. Now I could tape this up to his head, I could do all kinds of stuff, but this is kind of fun. I just have some blue tape wrapped around the target and uh, wrapped underneath, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and access program number two. There it is, program number two. I'm gonna let it go through its cycle real quick. And uh, I'm gonna be close because I'm looking for speed. How fast can I draw and shoot? Okay, I'm not looking to uh, be far away. I'm just looking to see how fast is my draw. So here, this one obviously is, is not gonna work. Now when you uh, work these holsters, uh, by the way, let me show you this. I've got this $40 holster on. This is the one we make, simple, easy. I've got my belt tagged down to um, a, a, another notch than I normally wear it because I want that holster to be tight. I don't want it to have any movement. So um, when I go to holster the gun, the technique, thumb on top of the slide, this really applies to just about every uh, semi-automatic handgun because you don't want the, the holster to knock the gun out of battery at all. So you come in, thumb on top, finger out of the trigger, secure it goes, all right? So here we go again. Let's go see if I can get this guy to come up. I'm just looking to see how fast it's gonna take me to draw and shoot. Okay, so 1.18 from the holster. Now it's not concealed yet, but we'll get there. Oh, just missed it. 1.29, I was not paying attention. Here we go, it's gonna reload itself. Let's do one more. Okay, so about a second, not bad. 
1.05. And um, obviously, it could be faster if the holster was here, if it was a competition holster and no hands were here and all that stuff. But you know, we're going to go ahead and practice for uh, concealed carry. So I'm going to put a shirt on to actually conceal the gun. And this is something I would probably wear. I'm going to be careful with my microphone, so make sure I don't have too much static and noise. Now, you could say I could probably get away with concealment on this. So the technique for drawing is to get this piece of clothing clear. So I've got to practice clear and back down. So it's clear. Now I will say this, as you introduce this next step of concealment, the grip on the handgun becomes even more important. Remember we talked about consistently presenting the gun to the target? The consistency starts with the grip. If your grip is off, and you're presenting the gun to the target, after all that practice, the sights are not going to be lined up properly. And I will tell you at the speeds I'm trying to work at, I'm not necessarily looking at the sights. I'm bringing the sights into my line of sight, and I'm assuming that they're going to be lined up because of the practice I've done. But if my grip is off, the sights will be off. They won't be aligned properly. Just a little bit, but a lot of that comes down to how it feels. So as I go to access the gun, I want to make sure that I get myself in the right spot. This is the right spot. Over here is not the right spot. Here is not the right spot. I got to be up top here. And a lot of that comes with muscle memory. How often have you worked with this holster, with this gun, with this type of concealment? If it was a jacket, it'd be a whole nother type of clearing of the clothing. This is a shirt, sweater type concept. So I've got to lift and get down and come up. Now again, these are close targets by design. I'm not trying to show off and be across the room because I won't be able to get that kind of speed. I'm really looking for how long does it take me to pull the gun out of the holster from concealment and actually shoot the shot. I have to assume that in a self-defense situation, this target is not going to be 30 yards away. If it is, I should go get cover. I assume that in a self-defense situation, there's something really bad happening, and I've got to pull that gun out, and I've got to access it quickly, and I've got to start shooting shots quickly to eliminate or mitigate that threat. So that said, that's why I have it close. Because I'm really looking to, what techniques can I employ that are going to allow me to get to this faster and get that gun up in play? Or is it just practice, and I know that, hey, you know what, it's going to be 1.2. Let's see. So I'm going to start with my hand just basically on, the, on the, the weapon or on the shirt. One point three. One point three one to be exact. All right, I'll try it again. One point one six. Not bad. One point one seven. So you can see that's kind of where I'm going to be. I'll be honest, I did do a 1.07 the other day. <laughs> but 1.2 is going to be an average. And that's not bad. So could I expect to do better out of concealment? I don't know. I know a lot of competition shooters, the top guys in the world, from here down to here up to here in a competition style holster that's fully exposed, you know, that's like 0.7s, 0.8s. Those are good times. So um, from concealment, 1.2 is, is a pretty good price or a pretty good uh, uh, time. And I don't know if I could be a whole lot better based upon this style of carry. Now, we also have another style of carry, which I'll bring out because I kind of love like this. This is how I carry mostly, OK? This is a $35 holster right here. Very simple. Look at this thing. It's like you know lightweight. It's hardly anything. Uh, it goes in the front here. 
I'm going to now take this down just a little bit because this is inside the waistband and I can't have the belt that tight. So basically what I'm going to do is just click the holster right in here and then go back here and that's it right there. So now this draw is a little bit different. Same concept though. Can I go ahead and get to the gun and shoot fast? So here. And of course, uh, you know, I like this carry. One, I've got the body type for it, but two, the gun's close. It's in my possession. You know, I've got it. I can, you know, basically walk around with just about any shirt over top of. I will tell you this though, I do want to wear an undershirt because when you start to practice like this, you start to, you'll tear yourself up with your thumb and the grips uh, on your soft little belly. <laughs> so uh, I would say that uh, uh, for this kind of practice, I always wear a shirt underneath that's tucked in because it would just, I just tear yourself up. Uh, in the real world, if you're actually going to be concealed, you can certainly just have a t-shirt over top of your jeans and, and no shirt underneath. You're not going to be doing 100 draws uh, that day. So it's not going to be a big deal. But um, uh, for this practice, that's why I have this undershirt on. Um, one of the things we have to always talk about with concealed carry too is the fact that you know, you're not going to access the weapon unless there's danger, unless there's something bad happening. So you know, just having it on, that's the key. We don't think we're going to outdraw a bad guy if he's got a gun on me and standing five feet away from me. That's not what I think is going to happen. You know, unless he's distracted, he turns around and I can get up and go boom, 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 <laughs> uh, multiple times. Then I, I would see uh, uh, some action there. So let's go ahead and now put this on another program. All right, here we go. So it's now going to be three shots. I want to practice three shots on my bad guy from concealment from the IWB holster. Did I turn it on? There we go. Let's see if this works. Three shots. Oh, got my fingers stuck. Didn't have a great grip. First time was 1.08. Second was 1.52, bad split. And uh, third time is going to be a 1.75. So let's do that a little bit better. See if I can get all three shots under 1.5. Okay, so 1.02 is the first shot. Second shot, 1.26, split is 24. Third shot is 1.45, all three shots under uh, one and a half seconds. Uh, you can see I am faster from this front carry than I am from the rear carry just because the gun is a little bit more accessible. Um, like I said, both these holsters are, are, are my go-to holsters. The uh, Kydex uh, concept you know, is, is really just sound. I mean, these holsters will last forever, basically. Uh, unless you melt it <laughs> in the very hot sun. But that said, um, they hold the gun the way they're supposed to. The gun is accessible when you want it. Uh, it's easy to put on and off. Um, we actually will uh, just leave the gun in there the whole time. So if I have to go to a, a bank or other place where they don't want you to have a gun, I just take the whole holster, pop it out, pop that in the, uh, in the um, uh, glove box, lock it up, and then come back out and then pop it back in and then you're ready to go. So uh, the key is dry fire practice really is going to help you become a better shooter. And this new target is going to help you quantify how much better you become. And that's what I like about it. So it's a, um, uh, it's a simple little target. It's uh, easy. We sell these just recently, just got on. They're brand new. Uh, I'm telling you what, uh, this has elevated my practice sessions because now I can say, well, okay, one, am I accurate? Sure. Two, what is my speed? What is my time? And now, of course, to make this a lot more challenging, you start to move back. You know, like I said, I'm three feet here. I'm testing my dexterity and my skill level to get the gun, to access the gun from concealment or even from your competition holster or from your duty holster. Because, you know, the, the law enforcement guys, you know, they've got a lot of manipulation to do before they can even gun, you know, pull the gun out of the holster. 
uh, because their holsters have locks on them. So all that said, this timer will help you quantify which techniques allow you to be faster and which efficiencies that you put in as to for where you position your gear will allow you to be faster. And of course, speed is what saves lives. I'm Lenny McGill. This is, of course, the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop. We're here in San Diego, California, soon to be in Nashville. Uh, if you are in San Diego, come down. You can play with our lasers. I would tell you that if you're looking to be a better shooter, get the magic bullet, get one of these target systems, and practice 60 to 70 percent at home, which of course, you know, is invaluable, really is. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.